welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Sarah Griffiths, Rob H, Ben White, Maximum Gravy, Austin Witsit, John Kays, Tommy Swagnets, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuker, Bo Snail, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Ledrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I'm going to hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Floated around uh, Discord a bit yesterday, just checking different Flat Earth servers. There's a um, there's a lot of nonsense in this topic. I've noticed. Yeah, there's a lot of people got a lot of things to say. Yeah. You you just happen to be at the top of the chain. That's what it is. So everything else you hear is going to sound silly. I'm sorry. I'm not being prideful. That's what you've uh, constructed here, Nathan. Me. Yeah, this is top of the line. No nonsense. So when you listen somewhere else, it sounds ridiculous. The conclusion being well, everyone you know, should, should share this show far and wide. Right, Neil? I do. I share all the shows. You know, I, they were good people. You know, it's not like, um, it's just... You know, good people can be wrong. I, it's it, it's just um, the conviction in their voice, and you know the absolute certainty of of them being right. It just it kind of put me aback. I was like, wow, you know, I don't even I don't even speak that confidently about facts, you know. So it just it was off putting to me. Give me an example of one thing. Well. I want to say something before he gives that example. Uh, how do I put it? It's like people, as truth seekers, they come to the truth, and then there's like another layer of like deceptions behind that, right? So that's kind of what's being reminded to me right now with uh, what he said. But yeah, go on, ask. You can answer Neil's question. Well, that it was. Uh... I think uh, Righteous was there yesterday in one of the uh, channels, and I was talking about how there's like so much that I just don't know, and well, I wonder about, how. You were talking about the rice experiment. That was really good, but then I got the real quick. Yeah. It seemed. Yeah, because I was talking about how much does belief affect the world that you know we exist in, and I, I wasn't trying to make an assertion, you know, about if it did or didn't. It's more just a question, and then like somebody got triggered and started preaching like some crazy nonsense, and I was just like, I can't do this. I can't. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> like what? What they preach? Uh, sometimes, I, I see. Sometimes people come there drinking too, and then you, some you can't notice sometimes that they're drinking. So it might have been that. What do you mean? You can't notice when you're drinking. Because uh, cause it was interesting, you know, like we, me and my son both did the rice experiment. I, I really didn't think anything would happen. You know, I was just humoring him because he said he'd seen it online. 
And he believed it. Absolutely, 100% believed it. Uh, You cook some rice. You cook some rice. It's not really an experiment. There's no, uh, you can't put it in that framework. I shouldn't call it that. But uh, you cook three cups of rice. No, it's not even that. Let me get to it. Uh, Just listen. You cook three cups of rice, and you put them in three different mason jars sealed. And you put on one of them love, one of them hate, and one of them control. And the control one, uh, you don't really do anything with. The love one, you say nice things to, and the hate one, you say, you know, mean stuff to. And my son was like, you know, full on into it. And I was, you know, kind of going through the motions. And you couldn't tell a difference in mine. But you could in his. Well, that says death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? They say that with plants, too. When you speak to plants, as you water them, as you speak to them, if you speak lovingly to them, supposedly they flourish. If you're a mean bastard... Uh, supposedly they don't flourish. I don't know. Well, no, yeah, that's, but, yeah, that's wait. why Righteous had a problem with my name, too. He's like, hey, <laughs> man, your name's Chaos. You're speaking that stuff into existence. You're, you're manifesting chaos wherever you go when you use that name. What's wrong with manifesting chaos in a rightful way? Well, well listen to what God said. He said, you know, you know, choose, what did he say? He said, uh, he said, speak Blessings or cursings, life or death, therefore choose life that you and thy seed may live, right? So the things that we speak, right? There's power behind what we speak, like Neil said. So this is all... So I'm a monkey's uncle. Yeah, but I think Chaos chaos has a good name for this um, arena because he wants to create chaos in the heliocentric nonsense that's out there. Nothing wrong with that. There's something more to that, though, because if belief can affect reality and you got a lot of people within this arena talking nonsense is that dangerous well, well, it depends can i just really draw a do. distinction right so belief if you look at it in one way does affect your reality so in a very easy way to draw this example you've got your reality as the sphere earth beneath your feet that's the world you actually are living on with that belief. So therefore, belief has affected your perception of reality. Does it affect actualization of reality? I don't think so. I think you well, as a, I, wait, let, I'm let really me. there. You as a person have direct influence on your surroundings and it's only down to you to put that into effect as opposed to hope that wishful thinking will get at you so there we go let me let me answer uh stolen child really quickly because and and you at the same time because he said he didn't believe when he did the rice experiment but his son did believe remember it's out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if you don't really believe it and you speak it it's not the same as believing and speaking it his son believed and he spoke it and he got the results for you know, one rice rottening away, another one not. But he he didn't believe in his heart, and it didn't work for him. So you do have to believe too. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then and then that come to the placebo effect, you know, because they even account for that in modern medicine. There's how much does belief affect reality? Is is the really the question I'm asking? both non and a lot, your perception of reality is drastically affected by your belief. How you view the world doesn't change how the world actually is. Your belief affects it is not one iota. It doesn't make the slightest bit of a difference how you believe. If you believe the sky is a vacuum, it doesn't make it so. Now, for your perception of what space travel is, that's the world you live in, and you think there is a sky vacuum and you can travel through it. That's your perception of the world. So it very directly affects how you think the world is. But does that make the sky a vacuum? No. No amount of belief will make that happen. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Hold on. So when Jesus said, if you believe in your heart, 
and you ask this mountain to be removed, do you think it could be removed? Yes. Or when he says you can gain an inch to you can't gain an inch to your stature, worrying about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna wear, where you're gonna live. He means worrying about it. You're not going to gain an inch to your stature in that situation. Not that you're going to gain an inch to your stature or not that you're going to make a mountain move. Well, listen, Nathan said it doesn't affect reality, but his son said that he did affect reality by what he spoke to the rice. So the reality of the rice got altered. So what he believed and what he spoke affected reality. What the heck are you guys talking about? The rice experiment. Or it's not so an experiment. Exper yeah, so-called experiment, whatever. No, it well, it's, it's, it's like a law, laws of attraction as well. If if you think it, believe it, and say it, and dream it, you know, you, you can conjure these You're things into existence in a way. Can you? Can you? Because I think You're that's absolute horse crap given to you by some delusional idiot. Because I believe so in the actual I. power of doing things as opposed to wishful thinking will get me there. Uh, no, no. Doing the thing you want. Oh and achieving it that's what gets you there well, well okay. Nathan, what do you say about this there was a woman who had cancer and what she did was she went to king james bible and she found every from old testament to new testament about healing and she stood on every one of those scriptures and she was healed right Re research what to do to heal herself is what you're saying and the bible was her no, tool she Let said she took the promises of God and she stood on them. So who healed her then? The Lord. Thank you. Okay, now don't conflate that with text out of context. Okay, so yeah, if you're praying and asking God for favor and then God heals you and then we go back and say, well, can you explain what happened? Yeah, I, I, I prayed in faith to have God heal me. Then what you do? Then I just went through the Bible to see all the scriptures. Okay, then what you do? Well, then uh, after I saw all the scriptures, I went and got a checkup and I was healed. I said, praise the Lord, God healed, God healed you. Now, I can show you for everyone that God heals, someone praying like that, going through the scripture, and God says, you know what? I, I don't want to heal you. Exactly. You are better used to me the way you are right now. So God doesn't heal you. So what are you trying to say? Exactly. So I was about to say, I could show you the same amount that don't get healed. Or to take it to well, the other extreme rather than something that's actually worthy. Dear Lord, I really, really want a Lamborghini. Please make it so. He's yeah, going to give you Neil's car. He's going to give you Neil's car if you do that. Be careful. <laughs> no, no, my, my point yeah, is that... No, no, no. My point is if I want it. a Lamborghini, I'll have to do all of the things in my capabilities to acquire one. And that requires me doing things to acquire the Ferrari or the Lamborghini or whatever Carl said. Well, that's doing things. That's that's getting off your ass and making stuff happen. And that's, well, that's a lot of power that people don't realise they have. And I think this whole nonsense of wishful thinking is, is somehow disseminated into the masses. Like, you know, if you dream hard enough, and it's just nonsense. No, no, if you get off your ass enough and, and have a long working day, you might achieve enough money to buy your Lamborghini one day. That's, that's the reality. There's, a, hang on, there's hang on. a whole doctrine that says speak and declare. Trust there's me, a, there's a whole it's doctrine not, out there. It's a, it's a false teaching. Uh, it's called Name It, Claim It. Correct. And there, was, and there was a book that this guy put out, <laughs> You Shall Know Them by Their Cadillacs. I mean, these people are nuts. They're just in the health and wealth doctrine. And if you don't get healed... And if yes. you don't get rich, it's because you sinned and you're terrible. So you better yep. not. I mean, this is such a work of the devil. It's not even biblical. Well, yeah, that's hold on a second, because this got taken away from what I was actually talking about. And I'm not talking about changing um, uh, reality and how it's structured. I was talking about, um, you know, in your local area for reality renders for you is what i'm talking about because i, I missed i missed there's tell tell him what the rice thing they was again his Run bloody statement. hello go ahead john yeah but tent don't know what he was talking about with the rice thing that's all i was trying to say okay i got i well, need the right because he didn't get to finish so in your local rendered reality go ahead john right you know your knowledge of um how uh, light, uh, the path that light is taking can affect that light. 
So it's out the mind and the physical isn't as separated as um, the uh, the world wants us to believe. But I, I'm not saying that okay, I know okay, how okay, these things work. I, I agree. At a very fundamental level, in terms of talking about light, you can say the fact that light diffracts and you've got a probability distribution represented to you means that you can say life isn't as worked out as you might think. It's actually existing in a series of probabilities. Now, that's true, but you have a direct influence on the outcome of those probabilities. When you're standing on the road watching light diffract through some cracks in the trees and there's a bit of light splitting up and you go wow look at that diffraction pattern amazing at that point you can like in a video game you can bring up a whole list of choices that you can make right there and then you can on the spot right at that very moment leave your wife leave town with the car and go and start a new life in a different country you can do that you have the power right or equally you can throw yourself under the next bus that comes or you can go into the bank that's there next to you and take out a loan and start a new business and get the Lamborghini that you were thinking about all your life. Or you can just stroll on through your natural, boring-ass routine back to home to eat your beans on toast. You've got all of those possibilities. So all of those exist as the diffraction pattern. They're all merely an option that is yet to be fulfilled. What, what's the difference in terms of having life? you get to actually fulfill some of them. <laughs> you can do stuff. Or you can say, oh, wow, one of those probabilities might be the Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah, but that would involve you going into the bank, getting a loan, starting a business, and earning lots and lots of money to buy a Lamborghini. Not just thinking about it. <laughs> thinking about one of the options that could have happened, because you'll get to 80 and go, you know what? At that junction, that road, that T that I was at in my life, where I said... The world's nothing but possibilities. Why didn't I take one of the possibilities that got me the Lamborghini rather than walking over and having about, the beans on toast? So what about responsibility? If you if that's your life and you got a wife and kids, you're going home to eat beans and toast, that's your responsibility. To hell with the probability. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking uh, uh, about. Uh, uh, Neil's picked up on a very interesting point. Why would it be that people with no empathy do better in life, Neil. Why would it be that psychopaths are the cream of society? Why is that, do you think? Because they have no empathy. What would it require for the man who wants the Lamborghini to walk back and have the beans on toast because of his moral and family obligations? Well, a man who would have some empathy for the children and wife that he'd leave if he gets on the train or plane to a different country. Now, a man with no empathy... Now, he has a slight advantage, believe it or not. Now, this might come as a shock to some people, but there's a very distinct reason why psychopaths do better in society. It's because a man with em no empathy whatsoever will not care about the wife and family you've just asked about. So what will he do? Well, he'll go off and he'll chase the Lamborghini. To hell with the consequences in terms of what the family might not get as a result of him leaving them. But those are the people who rise in society, Neil. Those are the people who run the show. Correct. But there's, there's family people that, you know, put their heart, set their heart to something. And they can accomplish maybe not a Lamborghini, but darn near close. Look, there's a scripture. What you sow is what you're going to reap. Bingo. So that says it right there. If you go out there. But not hang on. Okay. I'm not saying there isn't a relationship about thinking, but the relationship has to be in context. If I say I'm a monkey's uncle, am I really a monkey's uncle? Or is that just a phrase? You can't go with this crazy notion that whatever you say speaks into reality. It's not correct. No, so who saying, said that? Who said I'm, that? I'm not saying you said that. I'm addressing righteous. So you say what you sow is what you reap. So if you're sowing labor, and you're working your butt off to accomplish something, you're going to reap the harvest of what you're sowing, correct, Tent? Yeah, definitely. If I, if, if I go plant a thousand seeds of a particular variety of something, some will die, some uh, will mature but not bear fruit, and a bunch of them will have a great chance and they'll have a harvest. But I got I to gotta go plant the doggone things. I got to go do it. 
Bring, bring. I think we got a subject bring. of what John was trying to explain. Hold on, I'm just going to take this call. Hello, is that Lamborghini? Yes, I'd like to buy some Lamborghini seeds, please. You stupid. Those Lamborghini seeds would be working your ass off. Can I? I, I want to hear the rest of what John was trying to explain. Well, wait a second, wait a second. God provides the seed, Nathan. So if you want a Lamborghini seed. The Lamborghini seed? <laughs> well, because uh, uh, he's not going to get John's <laughs> claim. He, he provides seed to the sower. Right. John's oh point gosh. was that even uh, though we're in, a, in an area that's exposed to the lies and deception, there's a lot of people that talk a lot of shite. That was his original point. That's where he started with it. I don't know if you want to round out with your actual ending point to that, John. I've got a minute, one, 60 seconds. Uh, but yeah, this is this is kind of demonstrating my point that, you know, I, I said that there was things in this, basically it comes down to there are things in this world we just don't know and don't understand, and we may never understand them. But it, it seems like any moment that anyone points that out, people want to tell you what is. Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. Now, we are joined by Father of a Stolen Child, otherwise known as Refracted Curvature, Righteous Voice, Righteous Force get this, some of these names right today not doing too well neil 10th man and a whole bunch of people in discord so welcome one and all you mean snap crackle and pop i mean Greetings. righteous voice that's what i mean that's it that's it nice hey good morning good morning good morning, get good my morning. Snap, crackle and pop good toast I think we are having a pretty good uh, discussion in the pre-show about the nature of reality so i'm hoping that will continue after a bit of housekeeping any evidence that you can have a curved adjacent whilst acquiring an elevation angle? That's a painful one right there. That's a game over right there. That's a scenario where you can't beg the question right there. True. Seriously? Anybody hearing you're going to need R for that? No, 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 no. You're nope. definitely not going to need R for a straight line meeting a straight line. Definitely not going to need R for that. You're going to need a flat plane for that. And to get this angle measurement, regardless of your fundamentalist religious belief in a sphere, you're going to need a flat plane to get it. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as the curve of the earth? That's just silly.
liven up a bit, eh, Discord? No, no Earth Curve? Nobody been told Earth Curve exists on their travels? Well, you would think that they would. The, the horizon's supposed to represent the geometry of Earth, isn't it? That's supposed to be Earth Curve, yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. Nobody uh -huh. defends that anymore, huh? Well, there's a lot of people on that side say when they get on an airplane, they see Earth Curve, and they were on top of this, they see Earth Curve, but where are they now? Are they going to speak that into reality? <laughs> Yeah, there is there is no speaking things into reality. We'll get to that in the uh, in the aftermath of the housekeeping questions. Any evidence of Coriolis the axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Turning many things, no. Now Mitchell from Australia launched his drone and was. Uh, showing it live on YouTube on his channel and he put it into a hover position. Everything was still. Then he moved the drone from right to left, I believe. And uh, there was movement being picked up is because the drone was moving. Well, you would need a, a radial value to have uh, an axis. So makes me smile at the time. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You're going to oh, need uh, dear. That's right. I love it. Nathan, I wanted to ask you, when you were talking to that guy the other day, why don't you just bring him to that when he was asserting gravity? I thought you were just going to chop him right in half and he tell him you're going to need a radius for that. Because he lied and said he was here to learn and that he hadn't had any form of contact with flat earthers. He was a liar because he'd actually spent a considerable period of time conversing with DITRH, sending him paragraph after paragraph, begging the question of a sphere, earth and gravity. So... He lied and said that he was here to learn. I took that at face value. More for me. I keep saying this. On the one hand, that's better because it meant I was far more calm. Now, I've said it in a mix to it. If he'd have come saying what was the truth of the situation, which is he was here to try and get Bitcoin based on his high school education about a heliocentric world, that's what he was here to do then he wouldn't have, it, I'd have been a lot more short with him. But then again, it probably wouldn't have been as airable. By the way, that show aired yesterday, and um, I did hear myself saying that guy's disingenuous. Yeah, well, you were right. No one would have ever dreamt that the guy was there to win Bitcoin, given that he said he'd never spoken to any flat earthers before. Well, like I say... I'm, I'm sure if he was here, he'd be like, no, no, that, I didn't actually speak to him verbally. It was the first verbal intro. You're like, whatever. Give me these weasel words. What we had the impression of was complete first timer, newbie, doesn't know much about the subject here to learn. That was the impression he gave us. Complete lie. Yeah, but there was a point, and then you can go on with housekeeping, where he was just chanting, and I'm sorry, that just gave him up to be disingenuous. Because if you're here to learn, you're not going to be chanting as someone's trying to educate you. There we go. I, I don't know. That... Go on, John. Sorry. I was going to say, I, I don't know, because a lot of people you talk to about this subject, they, they may just be normal people, but because the programming is so strong, it turns into a chant with them. No. So... No, you're wrong. Can't it? Yeah, you're right. We saw it with, um, I've forgotten his name, yeah, Harp yesterday. Same principle. Didn't even have to be something he strongly believed in. Just something he was convinced enough to tell us, I think you're wrong about something, here's my example. That was enough for people to stick by it because no one ever wants to be wrong. Now, when it's some, something so fundamental as the world itself, that's why people got so arrogant. Well, I know, with, with a, just a cursory amount of information, I can win bit through three bitcoins on offer. I'll have that. I don't even need to research what gas does. I can just tell you. Gas go down, go boom, boom. <laughs> it's a bloody hell fire. This really, the, the, the level of intellect that, that think they can win bitcoin with a high school knowledge of heliocentric gas behaviour. Wow. But that is what we're dealing with. And they'd rather spend their efforts and times convincing us that they've never interacted with any flat earthers than just say, yeah, I think Earth's obviously a sphere. What are you idiots? I'm here to get Bitcoin for telling you how spherical it is. Yeah? No, no, no mate. Yeah. No. Clearly, he's had some reason. No, I can't divine his thoughts. 
but he's had some reasoning behind that. I suggest that he's gone back and listened to a couple of the shows, specifically the ones where people are trying to get Bitcoin, and realise what happens when you just admit that you're here to get Bitcoin and that you've treated a little bit kinder if you at least intimate that you're here to learn. So that's what he said. I can only assume, based on my own experience with my own show, obviously there might be all sorts of reasons I can't, I can't really say, but that's what I'd guess. But he lied. That's the bottom line. He lied. He was here to get Bitcoin. He wasn't here to learn about why Earth's flat. It speaks volumes that nobody's won this Bitcoin yet, doesn't it? Well, Earth was, is, and always will be, obviously, observably, navigatably flat. So does it shock you that no one can prove it's spherical when it only exists in the maths? It's a model. It doesn't shock me. As I said all along, I'd love to go after three Bitcoin. I'm really poor. So, no, it should yeah, be shocking be nice. them, is what I'm saying. Say again? It should be shocking them, is what I'm saying. What's more shocking is that they're not here fighting for their Mother Earth anymore. So how in the world are they going to cash in on Bitcoin when they're not here winning any other arguments uh, before the Bitcoin challenge went out? In fact, I think that's there to get them here, but they're not even coming in for that except in a haphazard way. we got to get this to the next level. I'm sorry. Why? The Why? They're defeated. They lost. Why is there the next level? Next? This comes back to that thrice eight Hermes guy's description of his view on society when he sat slumped as a jester character in a big old fashioned chair. You know, he's kind of morose about it, but he's saying you can try and care about the Western world, who are, let's face it, the ones calling us idiots and throwing stones at us. You can try and express your empathy, but there comes a point where you just have to sit back and go, I'm just going to laugh at this because it's so absurd. <laughs> you know, what else are you going to do? You'd go nuts if you didn't. Hey, Bev. No sound, amigo. Is that Bev? No, can't hear anything. Is it Bev? 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 I tell you what, everyone else on the panel, while I'm trying to do a sound check with Bev, it would really help if you all talked at the same time. Go ahead. Hey, Bev. I don't think we've got any sound from him anyway. While Bev's sorting out his sound, we'll rattle through the rest of the housekeeping questions. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? No, it's a light in the sky, and uh, we don't know the distance. Well, some flat earth is say it's 3,000 miles away. Well, give us proof. I don't know. It could be. It could be three thousand one mile away, and and they'd be wrong by one mile. This got covered yesterday in Arwin's fundraiser. So check out Arwin's fundraiser because he has the exclusive on Rob Durham's video, and in there there's a bit of a, a back and forth between Rob Tenth, me, and Adam Meakin about the square and compass in regards to what you're using to measure the sky and what you're using to measure the land. So it really was. I say this, it sounds like I'm blowing my own trumpet a bit too much, but it really was a fascinating conversation um, be because it's the first time it's been discussed on air. Now, this is something that we discuss frequently off air as we're edging millimetre by millimetre closer to an understanding about this stuff. But the things that we did discuss, obviously, we're only discussing them on air because we have got a reasonable enough understanding to, to convey what we're trying to detail. Uh, on that show so check out Arwin's fundraiser from yesterday if you want to see Rob Durham's video um, uh, and chuck him a quid or two he's struggling to pay his rent at the minute so he's having a bit of a meltdown over it which I can't blame him you know financial struggles are a thing that I just have to laugh about the same as I do with society it's just part of being a flat earth YouTuber you know you understand and appreciate that when you have to put your hand out embarrassing though it is you do and you get the support that you hope for and at least i hope uh, we will get exactly that so check out his fundraiser um intentionally by us guys he's got extremely riveting content to go alongside it um so you know even if you're not that interested in giving our money you will definitely still want to check out that stream um because it's ran packed with content that's that's exclusive to our at this stage so yeah check it out be here or be sphere it was yesterday's uh, Night Owl, I think he calls it on the A R W I J N channel. Um, but yeah, I think he's a bit burnt out. So um, give him a breath, give him a break, and hopefully throw him a quid or two or whatever your currency is. Moving, go ahead. Is that Bev? 
So what happened? Because I couldn't, I was on for 15 minutes and I didn't hear a word. It was totally silent. Yeah. Um, so you're saying that show went on? Yeah, that show went on. I mean, I had a good enough idea whilst monitoring. It was so hard work, I've got to be honest, for me, because I'm there monitoring his stream and checking that sounds coming through and trying to trying to stop everyone from addressing the technical issues. You know, the, the rest of the panel saying, look, we can just about hear Arwin. That's good enough. You know, show must go on sort of thing. Uh, to a point. Um, and, you know, whilst hustling everyone to give Arwin money, those sorts of things are best done by somebody who isn't yourself if you're trying to trying to e-bag it's it's always much better to have somebody do it for you and i don't know i'm a dab and at, at uh, that sort of thing doing fundraisers for other people but there we go that's that's just how it was it went on and it was fine and rob got to chat to us about his video and the video got aired at the beginning of the show or a third of the way in is that someone trying to talk no clearly not Someone with their mic wide open for no reason. Okay, there it is again. Yeah, I'm hearing it too. I just came off mute, but so maybe he's it's having trouble. It's level getting... spirit. It's level spirit. Spirit. How are you doing? Hello. Level spirit, you're hot micing. I'm muting. Okay, well, hold on a second. Let's just let's just ask him nicely. Sometimes people are new to Discord and haven't figured out how it works. Try to look at your mute button. Who asked him uh, not nicely? Where'd you get? Let's ask him nicely. I don't know. The guy <laughs> no, was no, as, as that's fine as he can be. You don't have to defend me. That was preemptive, <laughs> and I know it. <laughs> yeah, okay, refracted. I'll hold my tongue. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, but but righteous is right because the first time I went, I didn't know what I was doing, and I was getting accused of being a troll, and it was only um, what's his name? Um, I forgot his name, but he 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 talked me through, it and I got on. Yeah, that's nice, but that's not what just took place here. The guy, the guy who spoke after Nathan was nice. I don't understand. Let's talk to him. Nice. I just meant not. Let's not mute him right away. Maybe he can get it figured out before we mute him. If not, I'll we'll mute him. Jedi, okay. Jedi, uh, we'll, we'll give it, Jedi. Okay, we are literally in the middle of a live show. So, level spirit, can you hear us? No, I'm in the fourth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, let's move I on. I that happened to my son the other night. Okie doke. Let's move on. Let's get some control. <laughs> Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical earth? No, but that was a great twilight zone. It was the child was in another dimension. Okay. <laughs> this is going well. Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container? No. Negative. It's been comical, them coming here telling us. Uh, we all, all we're saying is show it to us. They can't show it to us, so they go into verbal diarrhea about it, and it's nonsense. Well, it always comes to where do you get the gas pressure in the first place? I can't answer that question. How about just showing it? You claim it, you say we're in it, just show it. If we're in it, you can show it, right? Yes. Well, what happens when you can't show it? Then you can't have gas pressure without it being contained. End of story. Outer space is fake. Moving on. Any scientific evidence of gravity? I have something on that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it. Like, what you're really asking for is um, gravity, which is an invalid description of a phenomenon no one's ever observed. You're asking for scientific evidence for that, right? That's correct. Okay. I just, uh, I just wanted to say that, that nobody's ever observed it. It's not a, it's not an accurate description of anything. And uh, yeah, you'll probably never get. It's the scientific method with that. Yeah, yeah and there's no clearly defined phenomenon. Yeah, it's the metaphorical equivalent of asking for scientific evidence of travel through Narnia wardrobes. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. But people believe that, you know, gravity exists. Um, how do you, how do you, uh, you know, see through that if you're, you know, been indoctrinated with it your whole life? Because if you try to t tear apart the description, they'll jump back to the phenomenon. And if you tear apart the phenomenon, they'll go back to the description. And they just jump back and forth between the two. Right, any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? I was explaining that to my son yesterday. I was telling him there's plenty of phenomena, but they, they can't manipulate anything, so you can't have it. Well, they can't manipulate anything that they claim would cause it. Correct. Yeah. So, in case the uninitiated aren't aware of why we asked this question, formerly the most recent edition prior to the question about curved adjacent, you don't have any science for a sphere. There isn't any. Zero. None. Nada. No science for a globe. So all of you are under the misapprehension that, you know, science proves a sphere. Maybe you're under the delusion that the whole body of science proves you're on a sphere. Yet there isn't any science for a sphere. None. Well, they'll come back and say there's no science for a flat Earth either. either. But if they ask us that, that as a rebuttal demonstrates a lack of understanding in science. We ask it because it is asserted as a positive assertion that there is scientific evidence of the sphere Earth. Hence, we ask for it because it's asserted to be in existence. We, who understand what science actually is, wouldn't ask for scientific evidence of a flat Earth because it's not a naturally occurring phenomena. So for, for them to ask us in response when we're not claiming scientific evidence of a flat Earth, and further to that, you can't establish a flat plane, that's a geometry, with science. It's absurd. Now that was educational, Nathan. Oh, thanks, Neil. You're blowing a lot of smoke at my ass today. What have I done right? Well, I've done something right. I led you to that because I wanted you to say it that way. Oh, well, thank you very much. I've, just have a quick check with Bev. Have you got yourself sorted, Bev? Can we hear you yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Mic check. Is that good? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Great, great. Good. So, uh, is DP in here yet? Who? I'm just looking for some pictures. Oh, okay. To give you. Oh. Good, good morning, timing. Bev. We just concluded the housekeeping, so good timing. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, hello, Bev. Good to have you. Hello. Is DP in here, or is he? Is he, he not come? My, DP. My, yeah. DP, domesticated uh, primate. No, he's not yeah. on the. Uh, he's not on the panel. <laughs> he can't. He can't get into his Google account. He might have to uh, go in through the Discord. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. All right. Hold Are on. you ready for oh, us everyone to... Else, uh... Hold on. Bev, fill us in what's going on. Just... <clears throat> excuse me. I want to clear my throat. <clears throat> Just fill us in what's going on so the audience know what's going on. Okay. Well, um, because it's the end of the... Uh, call it the end of the test season where we go out and, and do stuff. We go out to the beach. It's uh, There's not much uh, daytime. We, we, we finish the end of our um, optic tests. But we, the long nights in the UK, we, um, this is, <laughs> we're liking to the idea of turning to the laser waving and, and to do some laser tests. But more of a just to get out, you know, especially... You can't really go out and, and meet people and do all of that sort of stuff in this day and age. So the, we, we've hit upon the chance of the uh, laser waving. And um, one of the things that we've been doing, I've been after trying to do it for quite a while, is a laser test from uh, Southport. Well, originally it was from Southport to Blackpool. Because when I've been taking some pictures, um, it became noticeable that we can see the edge of Blackpool um, 
in, in mostly all of the pictures from Southport. Um, because it's a really bad beach and, you know, that's the one where the famous 200-hour stared picture that somebody found on Facebook, uh, that picture was taken at a, a really bad place on Southport Beach. It's really muddy to get there and it's it's not a nice place. So we've developed a, a another test just a little bit further up the beach where we can we can get over a mile in a straight line um, down the test. So we've done a few optic tests down there, but we hit upon the chance of doing a, a laser test. So the the laser test is we, where we both go on the beach. Um, one person goes over to Blackpool, um, one person on Ainsdale, Ainsdale to Blackpool, A to B, can be any anywhere you find a place that you can do and um, you just get people in, in the other places and you see whether you can see each other with the lasers. Uh, it's, it's been quite good with some of the questions that, you know, whether you should see it and what height you should see it and all of that sort of, I mean, irrelevant to us. We just want to go out and see whether we can do it. So that's the idea. Uh, I did offer it to other people that live in Blackpool to do this test, but they've declined. So DP has been coming up from down south, wherever he lives down south, up to see us. And we've been doing these tests. Um. So we, we, we're just sort of um, opening it up to as many people as they want, you know, to come and join us to do this uh, laser waving. Now, we don't know how far we're going to be able to see and how many people we can get out and about. But that, that's mainly the test. Um, we, we, we're going to do it again. We we think we've got some good tides coming up. Not this weekend, next weekend, because uh, we're looking at you know certain tides have to be sorted for um for you know just just for our benefit. So, I mean, what 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 do you want? I can give you some pictures. Uh, yeah, if you, you, can, if you, you can line them up. I can just plug my audience for who you are and what you do because we mention you a lot, but you're not that often on the panel. So Bev is the guy we're talking about when we accredit a, an entire channel to one argument that we're currently having about curved adjacents and that geometry. So when we mentioned Bev try thinking and saying he's dragging the Globers around by the short hairs with this specifically and has been for several years, this is Bev. So you need to go immediately and subscribe to him if you haven't done so already. Because like me, when I moan about no one coming because... It only has an audience, that's this show, if people share the show. Well, likewise, we only increase in subscriber base if our own promote us. So I've got to promote Bev to pay it forward, otherwise he won't grow. So please go and subscribe immediately to Bev, and hopefully that will, uh, in, in turn, increase the amount of people he gets participating in these events that he does. Um, so just so we're assured in terms of what Bev's situation while he lines up his pictures, let me know when you've got anything you want to share, and I'll just stick it on for the audience, Bev. Um, oh, yeah, one question. Go ahead, go ahead. If, if he wants domestic on, I fixed his... He can get on, my, on the Discord server now, so if he wants to, he can try to Discord. You just got to give him the link. The Discord, it's underneath the video, so if you can find his way to the live stream, it's the same link always for Discord. He'll probably be listening in. All right, and then go on live stream QE, and once I see you there, I'll move you down. Or live stream Q, wherever. Just jump in Discord. Hopefully we'll get to chat. Did you want to um, preemptively tell us who domestic uh, domesticated... What's his name again? Primate. Domesticated pri yeah. primate. Uh, domesticated primate's the, uh, the meme guy. I mean, everybody knows who DP is in in this sort of arena. There, DP does does all of the memes that uh, trigger. Let's say um, he does all of our memes. He does most of my thumbnails, um, t-shirt designs. He's he's our uh, graphics man on the team, but also the uh, you know tester. He comes out and. We we do when we go out filming. Um, we we do most of that. I'd like to uh, say it's mostly of what we do is 
uh, we don't do much live stuff and we don't present live on on the youtube but our, most of what we do is live within the discord and because um we are the people out in the field when we broadcast live stuff we broadcast it into the discord so that makes it a bit difficult for me personally to broadcast it onto youtube you know running multiple live things and we're just not equipped for that so when we are doing tests we we do it in the next level discord server and it it's up to everybody to go in there and record the stuff obviously if i'm out there i can't really record anything either so i'm i have to uh, use the people that kindly uh, record what we do in the discord and then i can use that video uh, to put my videos out when when we're out testing anyway so most of the um, live stuff that we do, when we do testing, we do uh, live music, all of that sort of stuff, it's it's just within the Discord. And only the conversations that we have, we put out live um, onto the YouTube. So it, most of the stuff happens in the Discord. And that's where um, we do all of these um, live tests it, it makes it better because there's the the communication over the distance um, is hard to do if you're on uh, YouTube and on the phone and all of that sort of stuff. So you can just broadcast your stream, uh, your stream screen, and uh, talk to people within the Discord and broadcast it all into the Discord. So I, I find Discord to be a very good. Um, useful tool for this and obviously a lot of people can go into the discord and and be involved in it too that's what i'd like to promote that sure so that's next level discord server right mm -hmm. so yeah check yes. it out if you're a discord user that's where you can see live streams and uh, i totally appreciate what you're saying in terms of the complexities of doing it you know, and I didn't mention this earlier, but Arwen was, you know, struggling with all the assistance he could have had yesterday because, not to blow my own trumpet, it is hard. <laughs> and, you know, what you're doing is, is getting the most efficient compromise that lets you give the information out without having to go through the faff of setting up stream keys and all that kind of nonsense. And you just want to get the information out and get it to whoever's in the Discord server. And hopefully, with enough people there, there's somebody there actually, you know, recording it for, for, for brevity or whatever the word is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do. We have done a quite a, a quite a lot of tests. I mean, the latest one we did was um, we pegged out a, a line one mile and walked it in the auto level, um, so you could actually see uh, the perspective compression disappearing into the distance. Now, there's quite a few things we have learned from that uh, relating to horizontal obviously because that that's where that's what we deal with mainly it's it, very simple what we what we do is a uh, really basic geometry and it's all centered around the straight line the one that you're asking for a curved adjacent well we've been asking for that for quite a long time and In, indeed i just want to expand that out when you say we deal with that it makes it sound like it's isolated to you next level discord server and these tests in quotes uh, but yeah we I mean, everybody deals everybody with it, right yeah. exactly yeah yeah it's a, but i mean that has been our specific focus of of you know we don't try and go too far into all of the other arguments we we simplify that one particular argument and it it's uh, it's never ending because i know there's a group of people that have to curve it and it's impossible to. Well, what I would like, if you're willing, is hopefully a seal of approval. So far, so good with everyone. It's had, it's been run past so far. But we've got a new housekeeping question. And as uh, Bev's just alluded to, speaking to the audience, um, this is something that basically that channel is about. And I can't stress this enough. Watching Bev drag ballers around by their short hairs with it is 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 endless amusement to me. I love your channel. I think it's very amusing. The fact that it's all premieres that people have kept that's fine you know don't i know that the stuff doesn't come out live it doesn't doesn't phase me in the slightest and i've got the same attitude as qe what difference does it really make 
well not really any and if you really are so inclined to watch it live then you can on the next level discord server you can literally watch it as it's as it's happening if that's what you must have you know for those of you who want that um but yeah but bev is driving dragging people around by their short hairs and we've now got and i'm so glad we have a housekeeping question that is essentially like the bev try thinking channels topic of choice which is to say how can you have or is there any evidence you can have a curved adjacent whilst acquiring an elevation angle so that's the housekeeping question what do you think um it sounds a little bit tricky to me you I mean it, it it sounds um i don't know we what, what we've been oh doing what we found is that the the whole geometry argument is based around a, a logical concept, and it seems as though those logical concepts that it's structured around have been lost. So a lot of the words make this argument uh, a little bit trickier than it should be. And it's basically, the way I see it, is you're asking for, can you have an angle um, with one of the lines being curved, which right. very simply within <laughs> geometry is impossible. Unless, of course, you make up a, a new geometry, which we've also helped them out with, uh, imaginometry. <laughs> Here we go. Keep going, Bev. You're <laughs> on fire, mate. It, Keep going. It does. It, 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 it builds into it because one of the concepts of imaginometry is it, it, this can never be drawn. It can never be shown. It's only in the mind, which is exactly where this curved angle sort of concept comes from. It, it, it's, it's made up by people who are model afflicted that have to imagine something that just isn't possible. They have no way of uh, of telling it. So I think, yes, it's perfect for for you with your housekeeping questions. It's just adding more questions to it that you know they can't answer. They, there is no answer. They They imagine they have answers to all of these questions, the group of people that we're talking about, but there is none. Well, this is why I like this particular aspect so much in terms of how we actually function on the plane that we dwell atop, which is to say that when they use the sextant in any of their arguments, they first must acquire an angle. Or to put it another way, they first must do something on a flat plane to then beg the question of a sphere. Now, with almost all other arguments that come our way, Bev, they, they start the other way around. If we're on a sphere, blah, 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 well, with this, it's, they say it very quickly. Once I got my angle from a flat plane, then I talk about how it's coming from the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth and you've got infinitely distant stars and they're basically coming in parallel to the same point, so it's basically the same as the angle <coughs> I measured on a flat plane. <coughs> that sort of thing. Well, I love that. They can't beg the question of a sphere before they actually measure the angle. So they're dead in the water the moment that you ask, you ask them where they got the angle. So you got where'd you get the angle again? Oh, off a flat plane. Yeah, which is why I like the idea of the, the laser test, because the, in order to simplify it, what you end up with is a, a line from Ainsdale to Blackpool or A to B, could be anywhere. And if you can see the light, then are you seeing it in a straight line of sight or are you seeing that light in a curved line of sight? Well, all understanding that I know so far has led me to believe light travels in a straight line, straight path. But like we had, uh, what's his name? Um, Ruhif. Have you heard of Ruhif? I am aware of the one known he's, as Ruhif. He's, he's one of those um, severely model afflicted people that we were talking about. Well, he said the other day, um, and he'll quite say it quite, uh, regularly that uh, that light actually bends because I don't know the, the, that uh, curved adjacent that you're asking for he automatically assumes it's there you can measure angles to it water bends at that rate air also okay, just, bends uh, at, I'm sorry at to that interrupt rate you, 
just that curve adjacent. I'm just going to play one section of Rob Durham's video. So check this out. The full version is currently exclusively available on Arwin's fundraiser from yesterday. Sorry to cut you off, Bev, but just check this out. Listen up. Is because the Earth is flat. Okay, to briefly touch on what the guys over at Flat Earth Debate have been saying, we're going to use the same example. So the GP positions here, our positions here, where these two lines intersect. Um, and we're going to look at it from an orthographic view. OK. If we're standing here on the Earth, this is the angle to the celestial body. Let's take a line from our position representing the horizon. The angle formed here is definitely not 90 degrees. And even at the position where it meets the Earth, you can't have a 90 degree angle to a curved surface and AutoCAD will actually verify this because if I choose this angular dimension command I can pick this line and this line and it will give me an angle between them. If I try to pick this line and this arc it says here object selected is not a line so it just will not give me a dimension. And why would it? How could it? It would be it would be different wherever you picked on that arc, the angle would be different at every single point. So where are you getting your 90 degrees? Where are you getting your straight line to form the 90 degrees? And where are you getting your circle? Nothing seems to work on the globe. Brilliant. That was it. That was the main bit I wanted you to focus on in this regard. There's a, a, an entire revelation in terms of the transposition from Mercator back onto Globe, which he also exposes in that video. As I say, it's exclusive to Arwen at the moment. It's part of his fundraiser from yesterday. If you can, chuck him a buck or two when you go and watch it. He, it's the only place you can watch it, so that little snippet's all you're getting from me at the moment. Um, but yeah, he's just showing in AutoCAD. You can't have a curved adjacent, basically, which was your point a moment ago, Bev, just to tail you back in. Yeah, yeah. In, in order, I mean, like we uh, structure most of our stuff around uh, geometry and Euclidean geometry and, you know, the call it um, the elements is the, the book we go with. And that's uh, the basic fundamentals of geometry, which, like I said earlier, is, is founded on logic. So it's not because somebody's wrote something down in a book that that's the rules. That's not the way geometry works. Geometry is, is founded on logic, which is founded on um, nature that we find. You know, all of the vertical and horizontal uh, being reference frames are, are used as such. They're straight lines that everyone knows that. Perpendicular, you know what perpendicular means is the relationship of the, the straight line to um, the maximally opposed other straight line. And the existence of one means the other one is there by necessity <laughs> and well, this but is... in order to do that you need a straight line well, indeed this is something that's coming up currently it's a little bear trap that a couple of people have fallen into that the tenth man had laying out there for about six months straight with the bubble sextant so these principles we're we're, we're talking about them but not from just a, a good base understanding of the geometry that you're talking about which is where you come from you know, we're having the examples given to us by Tenth Man about, you know, the practical use of a sextant and how those angles work. So for me, who's definitely not maths orientated, it's very useful to have someone like Tenth on our side telling us this is how it's actually being applied. So you can visualise it and go, OK, I understand that. You're getting a straight line, you're getting a parallel. You know, what the bubble sextant's giving you is the level already, so you don't need dip correction. But when it's explained with a thing... It makes it so much more digestible. I still appreciate there's going to be people out there that just aren't wired to get this sort of stuff. I'm not demeaning anybody. Some people just don't like this kind of proof. Fair enough. You know, for me, it's one where you've got um, what do you call them? Axioms. Uh, do you want to go through that with my audience? I'd be really grateful if you would. <coughs> well, um, the axioms of geometry are it, it, this mainly is something like you just said, you're not very good at maths. Well, geometry is the foundation of mathematics. 
because the numbers can lie. They they know lum- numbers can lie. They there's like a a trick, a magic trick. But in order to have um, a true understanding of what you're dealing with and end up with the truth value, logic is the only way you can do it. Now, maths is formed on logic, um, and geometry is the foundation of the logic. The the straight line. Um, it's it's rather strange when you get into it, but what what you do with in geometry first off is you you define the words that you're dealing with and the things that you're doing. So the definitions come first and foremost. The understanding of what the words mean. Now, there's loads of those definitions that you you know, I know, everyone knows. A straight line. It can't really be defined. I don't want to go into it, but I mean, and a, a triangle having three straight lines is the formulation of three points, three coplanar points. It So once you f- define everything, what an angle is and what a straight line is, all of that, then you can work into the axioms. And the axioms are um, self-evident truths. Um, So they're basic, really, really basic things like um, a half of something is um, two equals. You know, like you can't have something um, great. One of the best ones that I like is um, two straight lines cannot enclose a space. It's brilliant. That's correct. That is that is definitely correct. Cannot be falsified <laughs> yet. That's a fundamental flaw with the model. It's up to people to find it themselves, but that's disappeared. They they just get rid of the axioms that don't that they don't want to have to deal with. They get rid of them, and they'll say they they don't need it. Now, one of the main things of geometry and logic is. Um, the law of non-contradiction. You can't have something being um, something and something else. You can't have it contradicting itself, which is the basic concept of um, a straight line. A straight line cannot be a circle within logic, which is the understanding that I live with um, also, you have to get rid of that basic law in order to have a model that you think you live on. Yeah, you've got a term for that too, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say bendizontal. It's akin to you can't have a bent radius, right? When you say a straight line can't be a circle, the antithesis or the the um, opposite, if you will, is a radius can't be bent. But they will just throw out these simple tenets that you must base anything that you're going to assert with truth in geometry away literally you've said it already i'm just repeating what you've said but they have to throw it out well no we just don't accept that yeah yeah but the bendizontal came from it's your curve adjacent that you're looking for and um, that came from the fact very very early on me and spot on when we were discussing this we we realized that once you go down the geometric path and use logic to to do this. The only way out for the globe model believer is bendizontal. That that's their answer to it. They have to take that straight line and turn it into a circle. They're forced that, into it because just before you go on, that is what's happened. Your flat terrain, the plane that we dwell atop, has been turned into a sphere. So when you get down to the brass tacks of somebody who won't relinquish their fundamentalist religious belief, and you say, well, why is it that we're actually talking about here? We're talking about an an individual turning a straight line into a circle. That's what we're actually talking about. Yeah. They have to. They're forced into it. And, and that's been the basis of, <laughs> of what I do. All of my conversations can be boiled down to that. But we've sort of um, taught them their argument, right? They they just go with, well, 
yeah, level curves. It doesn't, but that's their argument. Now, so they avoid the argument. And I'm I'm sorry if that's what's because you know, the moment you talk about that curved adjacent, that's what you're talking about, is that bending that horizontal into a circle, having a circular horizontal, which they have in their model. Within their new no geometry. Sense. Well, it doesn't make any sense, but that is what it's required to be on a sphere, Neil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you look into the geometric and logical argument, that they have to go there. Circular straight lines. Have you ever heard of a great circle? Indeed. Well, why is it great? Because it, in reality, it's actually a straight line. Pretty sure Awesome Circle was already trademarked. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a circle at all. It's just, it's in your mind. You put that extra grate in front of it, and you can give it the concept of, well, you can imagine it as a circle, but it's not. In terms of navigation, when we're dealing with parallel lines, you gave one of the axioms earlier that those two parallel lines can't enclose an area, right? That's a, a, no, a principle. No, two, two straight lines cannot enclose a space. Right. So if, we can. if the notion is that we need to be penned in and you've got a couple of options, one would require the need to explain a way that potentially there's a border that doesn't exist. Let's just call it a dome. Or have it wrap around itself. Just make a straight line infinite, in other words, wrapping around on itself. That's much a much better solution if you want to pen people in, enclose a space, so to speak. So, in my humble opinion, the lesser of two evils, if you're trying to convince people that there's nothing more to see here, is to have them going around in circles in their mind rather than pondering what the limitation is. Because there Absolutely. isn't one. If you bend a straight line into a circle, you've, you've managed to enclose a space with it. In, in people's minds. Indeed. Well, that, that's right. why... I, you Sharp, very sharp, Bev. I didn't expect that to happen at all. That was going to be, after a few more sentences, my segue into what we talked in the pre-show. So we were talking about whether or not your belief can affect reality. I say absolutely not. Your belief makes absolutely no difference to reality unless you actually act upon what you want and make it so manifest it by physical action however in your mind's eye your perception of reality is absolutely distortable your truth about being on a sphere if you're watching this and you've never come across the show before very unlikely statistically <laughs> anyway <laughs> let's not moan about youtube um if you've come across if you just were that hypothetical person that probably doesn't exist that's watching this and is just an absolute straight up normie who thinks he's on a sphere in his reality that person is actually in their mind's eye on a sphere flying through space with star wars type sky vacuums that you could go through now that is their reality it isn't reality <laughs> it's just what they believe reality is so from that perception bev just to bring you back into this conversation hopefully john as well also hello adam um you know what's your take on that in terms of my stone cold no way belief believe what you like don't affect the actual reality of the situation what do you reckon bev i i try and have as few beliefs as possible i always try and um prove it to myself or you know as much as you can and one of the questions early on was that, you know, how much do you believe and what do your beliefs actually mean? I mean, it, I've always had this strange thing about religion and realizing that uh, faith is, um, I don't know, it's something founded on um, a belief, but with no actual evidence. And, I believe that's what belief and faith are sort of similar. You're just hope, trusting, hoping. It's what what you believe. Well, you, um, you used a you used a good word. You said realize. What what does realize actually mean? Make, make it real. Right. <laughs> you know, make it, it real for yourself. And, exactly. And have it and... in your eye. But that has two ways of perceiving it. To have the world a sphere in your eye is to believe that you're on a sphere. 
So you realise that you're on a sphere if you're a fundy, because in your eye, world is a sphere. The, the, that's where the trick comes in, because you're not actually realising it, because you're not actually seeing it with real eyes. You aren't, you aren't out in space looking at a fundy Muppet vision of a sphere, Earth, and the place they claim the pictures come from isn't real either. So you're never going to get to do it. So it's a, 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 a fake realisation, just a belief, right? Which is very different to a realisation. And how do you realise things? Well, you have to actualise them. In other words, you have to make them real to realise them, if you will. Now, that takes that takes doing, that takes effort, that takes, you know, a bit of tenacity most of the time, which a lot of people don't have. Yeah, because of, because of my upbringing, um, I did, I've never had a model. So I, I was going through life just, you know, thinking I was a normal person, right? Up until the fact that somebody questioned something that seems to trigger a lot of people, this particular question of um, belief and shape and, uh, you know, what, what do you believe um, the earth is, right? Well, I've never had that model. So Big E has never been my imaginary friend. And since I don't really have a belief system, I, whenever you try and prove something to yourself, uh, like I have to do, uh, when questioned about level being horizontal and I had to prove that to myself, then I do. <laughs> I did. I have. You know, but proof is only yours. Uh, um, you can't you can't hand it to somebody else. So now I don't have a belief that level is horizontal. I have a knowing that it is. There's quite a few of us that do. And that changes this um, belief idea um, into a knowing. So I know for a fact that level is horizontal. Now, I also know the geometric implications of that being a straight line. It doesn't put a model into my head. It's just that I know. And I know there's some things that I will never know also. Which you, is you have a, a similar freeing. attitude to myself in that regard, Bev, because you're not too concerned with proving it to yourself. You, you have this self-assured nature that tells me you're not too concerned with the people who confront you with their model because you know there's no requirement for one. Now, that self-assurance has come from your knowing things about aspects of the world you live in. And once you acquire that, you stop kind of concerning yourself quite so much with people demanding that you prove what you know to them. Because you think, well, why, why would I want to do that? All you're going to do is fight with me and it doesn't change what I know. Yeah, I've always been searching for, for this proof of things. Nobody up until, you know, a few years ago had, had told me I was a child abuser for thinking level was horizontal. So it, I'd never had to uh, try and prove it because I guess you already know, right? <laughs> the, the fundamental truth of life is that you, you, you know certain things, especially if you work with them. So having to prove it brought something into me that it meant that I now had to learn what it was to prove something to yourself, which is a, a wonderful journey. You wonderful know, journey you that's on, on, on that path. You've got certain people who aren't open minded, aren't on a journey at all. They're literally stuck in some ditch along the side of your path that you're walking along, demanding that you accept their fantasy with very, very limited understanding of their own fantasy let alone a willingness to listen to you in terms of what you're journeying for. And those people are going to be the ones that demand that you do accept their fantasy reality, that when challenged is actually standing in contradiction to a lot of standard principles that you describe. You know, you often talk about Euclid on your show. I'm hoping while the live show's still going, you can give us a couple of a couple of examples of that and then we can hopefully encourage you to stay for the after show a little bit if you're willing. Um yeah, yeah, I'd like to, yeah. Yeah. Um, what you, yeah. well, Euclid is just 
the fundamentals of understanding. I mean, it, it's the fundamentals of basic geometry that everybody already knows. So it, it's not a geometry book per se. I find it's a, it's a logic book. It teaches you how to prove things to yourself. It teaches you how to understand the fundamentals of, of actually what's going on, which I find a lot of the people that you end up talking to, uh, they've gone beyond that into this um, imaginometry land, we call it, where they've forgotten the basics and the concepts and the, the, the first principles and, and gone off into fantasy land. Well, the Euclid is, it, it puts you a, a firm understanding that you know the basics um, and the story of, of how that develops into the concept of um, enclosing space in people's minds is a fascinating thing. And like you say, you said there was people at the side of the road. Well, that's part of the journey, right? The, when you go into this finding proof for yourself and understanding and all of that sort of thing, that you become to understand that those people at the side of the road, they're, they're, they're a distraction. And that's all they want. They want to distract you. Because, I don't know, the, the, the mind that's been closed off, um, if that closure, it like, seals off, I don't think you can um, open it back up again. Perfect getting a lot of love for the uh, imaginometry from the live chat but uh, with that i'm going to say if you are watching this on either nathan oakley 1980 or nathan oakley premiering streams then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow unfortunately if you are watching this live this is where we bid you farewell so a huge massive enormous thank you to all of you smashed the super chat liked commented shared subscribed hit the paypal link and all that good stuff also below this video you can get 50 pounds for swapping your uk electricity supplier to octopus energy once again, stay tuned if you're watching on a premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video. Right about that. No, it ain't yeah. got nothing to do with Christianity. It, it's it's a geometric question, and it probably get yeah. me land. God is the master geometer. Geometer. <laughs> My new <That's> word. <laughs> Talking to new words. Got loads of comments about like bendizontal and imaginometry. The chat are like bendizontal. That's ace. Imaginometry. Oh, I love it. It's words. <laughs> God is the master geometer. You actually seen the imaginometry? <laughs> Have I seen the imaginometry? Yeah, we wrote it out for him. Like oh, we, really? We understood that. Yeah, yeah. The Globers have got no, um, they've got no geometry to support their model. So we, we literally made up imaginometry for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, right. Imaginometry has got its own lexicon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on, give us a few. Well, the definitions, right? Definition one, definitions are meaningless. Ruhif. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just great. make I it up. It already. Like it's imaginometry. Um, axiom one, right? First axiom is globe. First it's axiom, it. it's globe. It's a globe, yeah. It's a globe. It's a globe. Okay. Like, wow. So that, that's where you start off with every time you have to. Oh, I've, can I can I add one? If Earth not a globe, it's axiom two. Refer to rule one. I'll I'll, I'll get it for you. Um...
It's on the website. Do not mind me. The yeah, definitions, pfft, meaningless. Hello, it's good to see Bev still pushing that. How are you doing, Bev? All right, I've spoken a while. Yeah, yeah. How's how's the little one? Oh, doing very well. Yes. Getting big. <laughs> There you go. You're, you're obviously put busy. it in the uh, Skype chat there. Thank you very much. I'll put, I'll put it in um, the uh, Discord as well if anybody wants to have a look at it. Black Side's obviously very busy with whatever he's got going on in his life, but I do appreciate you putting out the little videos. So you know you're keeping your hand in. I like that. Thanks for that, Black Side. I've, I've been keeping up with your videos. That's not like that's a question. Oh. Go on, we had we had a robot, whoever that was. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to ask a question after you guys are done with what you're talking about. Uh, I, I'm just we're we shooting the breeze with this um, comedic lexicon from Bev, but go ahead. <laughs> so uh, the other day um, at, in a pre-show, I asked a question, but we didn't get to it, and uh, I just wanted to ask it now. So. Even though, like, I know, like, from listening to you guys, we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to subscribe to a model or a map. Uh, now, in the Flat Earth community, there's a big, like, uh, there's all these, like, sh like shill callouts and stuff and, and talking about the, the AE map. And I just realized, even though I know not to subscribe to a model, that in my mind, I was subscribing to the AE map. And it's been pointed out to me, and I don't know if it's true, that the star i I'm, I'm a flat earther and I, I will never change but it's been pointed out to me that the stars in the southern part of the world near australia uh there the claim is that they they rotate around sigma octavus now they say counterclockwise which is a relative direction but i don't know if that's true like do they actually go around sigma octavus or has that been debunked they all go east to west There yeah, I understand, no pole star. I understand that. That, that, that. There is no pole star in the south like the north, so that's uh, that's the region there. No, I'm not claiming it's a pole star. I'm asking if it if if stars circle around Sigma Octavius. All stars go from east to west. I'm not it's claiming that. I'm not claiming <laughs> that. It's, I'm not claiming it's going a different direction. Oh, I'm not claiming it's oh, going a okay. Yes, well, there is. There does seem to be a second point of rotation above our heads. Correct. The... No. Correct. Did, hold on, hold no, on. Did you hear that, That's... Eric? They look this. They, to me, they just look the same. They're doing the same thing. That would be to say that they look like they're moving around a point. Now there isn't anything actually there, but they're just they're doing the same thing as they do for you here, just with a different selection um, of stars. Correct. Okay, um, me living in the south. You can't really see Sigma Octantis as you would call it a pole star, although it does seem to circle around there, you could say. Okay, so that that would mean to me that like the 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 map that we don't subscribe to, but like it's it seems to be pushed this uh as a mythical equidistant map wouldn't make any sense because as you if you were on this map, you would be if you were in the north you would see it circling around Sirius. And then if you, as you would head south, it would circle around. So like at some point it would have to start circling around a new point, not a star. I'm not going to call it a star, but just another point that it seems to circle around. And I, I, I understand. Yes, that's correct. Hold on. The only people who've come even remotely close are people who've shown presuppositional point sources of light for the stars going through a lens essentially like an upside down uptoned dome and then getting the pattern to replicate a circular motion in the center over the map and then have a distorted like outwardly projected oval for the south section now it kind of works but you're right you know we don't have any functional maps now what we're on at at the moment, Eric, is fascinating. It's apt that you're asking because there is a very clear connection between the heavens and the land, which is understood to the point where we can utilise it with great accuracy. 
and yet deceived with a multitude of maps and the very nature of the world itself. So this is something that we're currently investigating because it has a degree of interest. It, it's the same as earlier. I can't remember what the exact subject was, was but, but it's the same for Bev in the regards that while he's looking into, that was it, it was his laser tests, so-called laser tests, right? You're going out and you're just looking at how the world works. Not because you think in any way it's going to be useful for debunking a globe. You don't need to do that. You understand the nature of reality. So why would you want to go out to acquire something, to do something that isn't required? Well, you wouldn't, but it's still interesting to just look at the world. Likewise, that particular aspect seems to come up for me, personally, again and again and again. It's where I started in this subject, in the maps. And every now and again, it just comes back up and rears its head again. And this is another example. There's a correlation between... The angular measurements in the sky versus the square, <laughs> flat lines of the Earth. Now, there is a, a correlation that's so accurately mapped out, you can work your way around the plane, even with all the deceptive maps. It's amazing. There's got to be more to it. <laughs> but we, we don't know what yet. But you are correct, Eric. Okay, thanks. I, I, and, I, and I just realized that like subconsciously I was subscribing to a model. Uh, even though I knew not to. So that's why I wanted to bring this up and, and ask what your guys' opinion on this was. I'm at work, so I just wanted to get that out there. No, and I'm, maybe I'm you glad you told us. It's about. okay. I'm, I'm very grateful you told us. Just dip your toes in the holy water. Five Hail Marys, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and Yeah, and the thing is, you, you can't really subscribe to any model because no model is correct. And you don't know if it's the opposition that's even brought that model out in the first instance just to make you look bad. So... I don't trust the model for nothing. Doesn't, I don't care this, what side this, it comes from. This goes back to what um, Nathan was saying about proof, you know, and what Bev was saying about proof. The one thing that I've learned from Bev is that you can't prove anything to anybody else. The only proof you can gain is for yourself. And in that proof, you gain the confidence to speak about what you know confidently. Right. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Trying to change someone's paradigm in this regard. Yeah, there's obviously examples where you can educate people and they might change their mind. But when it comes to somebody's entire paradigm, you're, you're facing a battle that you just have no... There's no benefit to you fighting it, really. It's like, you know what you know. That's, that's all you can deal with. If you can accept that, you'll do better in life because you won't be so concerned with the people demanding that you prove something to them when really they want to disprove you. No, they must agree. I think well, it's not agree, disagree in this subject, though, is it? Exactly. Well, that, when you understand that the model has been, um, there's a hole in the model. I'll fill it up. Oh, there's another hole. Well, let's fill that one up. When when you realise that at the end of it, all you've got is a load of patches. <laughs> There's no model there. It's, it's just the patches case. that have filled each individual hole. Exactly. That was a, an analogy that was made about five or six years ago by a guy called Mark who went by the name of Wakey Wakey when he had a YouTube channel. And he described the globe very similarly. So he said, it's like a papier-mâché globe. And you see it over in the distance all the time. And you're like, wow, it's amazing. It's solid like a rock. And, you, you know, you just give it a cursory glance. But then one day you go over to it and as you touch it, your finger goes through the paper and you go, oh my God, it's way for thin. So you go even closer and you look and you, you poke your eye up to the to the paper and you look through. And lo and behold, there's, there's other people on the other side of the model who are also staring back at you going, what the hell? There's nothing inside this. It's completely empty. It's paper thin. And then suddenly while you're looking and going, you're right over there five muscle-bound people knock you out of the way and plaster over it with some new newspaper and paint on it and get out of here. There's nothing to see here. <laughs> I think it's worse than that because you've done it. You've you've already patched each one of those holes. Once you become a, let's say, a hardcore globe defender, right, you are constantly patching those holes. Now, it's on you because you've patched the holes. So that model is entirely generated by the patches that you filled within a model that never existed in the first place. Right. And that's why they fight for it so hard. 
those yeah, patches up with light. Hold on, th- those patches are beautiful how you've just described it because it's it's the reverse of where chocolate and I described the questioning in our standard Western world education about things like gravity. So me, I can very vividly remember spinning a bucket round with water in it going, this don't make no sense, right? Now, at that point in your life, you've got two choices. Go away scratching your head going, okay, well, maybe I'll concern myself with that later, but at the moment, as far as I'm concerned, that, that doesn't make any sense. Or you can slap a little patch on it, cover it over with sellotape and glue and paint over it and... Bob's your uncle. Look at that. Working beautifully. (laughs) You've got a choice, right? Yeah, somebody asks you, how does that work? You just say, well, you spin a bucket of water around. (laughs) Of course you do. I mean, that's the answer that you've been given to by your teachers. So that's the answer that when you ask the question, when somebody questions you as to what it was, then you just tell them your proof. Which is I got back to the back of the class for that. I said, but the water's on the inside of the bucket. We're supposed to have water on the outside of a ball. Get to the back of the classroom and think about how you can turn this into a nice little papier mache patch. What's your problem? Well, now as a student, is it really your job to question the teacher in front of everyone and take away from that authority? Exactly, Neil. Bloody hell, has it taken you this long in life to realise how disrespectful you were being? I was only seven or eight. It's even worse. Yeah. Yeah, bad parenting. Yeah, bad parenting. Anyway, Neil's issues aside, you know, you don't question your heliocentric training. You're there to comprehend it. Yeah, what's with you? You're supposed to be believing your equations. Okay, we're Which working is... on Neil. He's getting there. He'll have peace with Flat Earth eventually. For now, he's, you know, he's very torn up about what? all of this. <laughs> He's not in a fit state to fight, but he's <laughs> he's got his son behind him. So it's a bit of a mess, really. Well, he's a hollow earther now. Are we still... His, his allegiance to Dick Earth continues, right? Correct. <laughs> hey, uh, if he's a hollow earther now, ask him how he can have his uh, self-perpetuating magnetic field without his uh, self-perpetuating molten iron core past the Curie point. Because um, that... That should be a problem, shouldn't it? Well, I, I'm actually still working on my Dynamo Effect video on that. I should have finished it ages ago. <laughs> There's quite a big flaw with the Dynamo um, argument to that. Yep. What, that self-perpetuating molten iron core? You think that's got a few issues? Uh, major no. issues. <laughs> remember they claim it's the dynamo effect that's why the magnetic core is still magnetic they think it's induced by the movement of the molten iron it's that, that's why we say self-perpetuating molten iron core exactly exactly that's the key word um, um, I got a question go, go ahead it's, go ahead it's it's kind of a I don't know. It might make some some people might get triggered by it, but it's it's about assuming um, that the reality we experience is completely geometric. I remind because... me to give props to Bev because he was like telepathic during the live show. I was looking to get a segue to the original topic the show started with, and with I don't know what I said, but Bev's re- response was literally the segue to get us back to belief. And whether or not it affects reality. Right. Um, I think one of the geometric certainties is that a straight line cannot form a circle. Is that like that's something we can all agree on. And horizontal is a straight line. Well, no, that, uh, no, no, that's not, I could... that's not something we can all agree on because that's without that we wouldn't have the lexicon that I've just been sent with Bendizontal in the... <laughs> in the descriptions. Well, hold on. I, I, I was going to hopefully tie this back to why uh, they've uh, formulated this idea of Bendy Zonal. Okay, go ahead. But we experience, we experience uh, a viewing circle around us, right? And that viewing circle is made up of the horizon. But that's a straight line. Yeah, yeah. 
DP. And and it's it's not a circle. <laughs> a, it's not. It's cir it's circular. There is a difference. Okay. Oh, I love but this kind of thing. Is it a straight line or is it a circular? No, go on. What's what's the difference? Right. Uh, hang on, let me find a meme regarding this. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> I love it. What's this, the difference? This... Hold on, I'll just dig out the meme. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is one of the things that we did, and I, I, I specifically referred to DP because in one of the conversations we had, DP said, uh, how many straight lines does it take to make a circle? And it was one of the first most triggering things when we said this is the horizontals, all horizontals are parallel to the plane of the horizon. Therefore, the horizon has to be a straight line, horizontal. So, But, but see, that's if it's circular or uh, the other word, then it can't be a straight line according to geometry. No, no. It, right? it is a straight line, and it's said as a straight line, the true horizontal anyway, at sea. Um, the, what you're thinking is optical, right? Because geometrically, you cannot, logically as well, you, you cannot just say, because you see a horizontal straight in front of you every time, you, um, just because you turn around through 360 degrees you can't conceptually make that u turning around into that horizontal uh straight line horizon did into john being just cursed. swindle us with geometry and optics i'm just disgusted <laughs> no uh, that was my point was that you don't want to confuse what we experience as being purely geometric well obviously if it is a straight line, right? So every time you turn, you can visually see it's a straight line and all the horizontals would be parallel to that, it being the true horizon. It's, it, that's a fact, right? So you can't then at some point, which is why what DP said was, how many straight lines does it take to make a circle? Okay, so let me try and answer then in, in the only way I can in geometric terms. If if you turn through a degree, so you're talking optically, and each time you do what you suggested, which is you draw out a new straight line, so you do that through 360 degrees in terms of what you draw, and then you take a bird's eye view of what you've drawn, what you'd end up with, obviously ignoring all of the overlap, internally you'd have a space that would kind of resemble a circle but as soon as you got up close to it at any sort of resolution you'd see that it was fundamentally made up of lots of straight lines all next to each other so a very very complex shape with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of sides and absolutely zero curve to it but from a distance it would kind of look like a circle made up of straight lines that's deep <laughs> i don't think that that i don't know about that that that's a bit far. I just it, don't think reality it, it, experience is solely it, geometric. Yeah, but the way Nathan explained it, you're going to have a whole bunch of overlapping lines. Yeah. That does make... Yeah, but straight lines don't make a circle. No, and they won't. Right. This won't be a circle. It, uh, yeah, a it circle. won't be. When you look at it from a bird's eye view, what you've drawn out, so you, you stand, you, you pull out, a, in physical terms, you pull out a line from your position, and then it's equal distance each time, and then you've got a T at the end of that line. You'd lay it on the floor and you draw a line. Then you move through one degree and do the same thing, draw a line. So you end up with lots and lots and lots and lots of overlapping straight lines. Well, that isn't a circle. That's just a very, very complex shape. Now, from a distance, it would kind of look like a circle, though, right? In the same way as a computer monitor can't actually give you a, a true circle with pixels, right? The same principle applies. He can give you a very close rendition of what a circle is. But in terms of an analog linear circle, or however you describe it in, the, in its true form, you can't replicate that. Is John, is, is John trying to say, uh, let's say you're a miniature person, very small person, and you're on top of a plane. And the size of the plane is so immense, and it will put you somewhere on it. And to you, optically, it says this, but then if you had a drone that can go high up and take a picture from above, an overhead view, 
you're just in the middle of a plane. So it's all, it's a straight line reality, but optically when you're at the ground level and you turn around, you're not seeing the whole table. You're not seeing the whole plane. Correct. No, no I, I think I, I can give it in a better analogy. The horizon, as far as I can tell, is the point of information loss, right? That's where we can't derive any more information from whatever measuring tool we're using. Making claims that we know things about it is dangerous. It's not dangerous when you define it differently. So when you start talking about the losses that you will experience based on the lens, based on the conditions of the day, all of which are optical as opposed to geometric, then there's nothing wrong with that. You can... You can fumble around in your understanding about how the horizon is formed optically what the limitations can be described as mathematically with things like the Rayleigh criterion I mean our, our knowledge of light is so limited though so it's it is difficult but there's nothing wrong with that the problem is the do, -si -do switcheroo from optics to geometry now we've known this for five years right since the Isle of Man debates so that that's what this is all about you know squaring the circle possible well the minute the minute you're looking at the horizon from your perspective that's optics right but the minute that you try to pull yourself away from it from a to get a bird's eye view you're moving to geometry right correct that that horizon doesn't exist that way correct when i draw out my line with the t on it and draw chalk on the ground and then fly up 100 feet to look down to create a circle that was originally drawn out from the view of the person on the ground well it's meaningless in terms of what the person saw each time you drew a line he just saw a straight line which is bev's point what you see is just the straight line what is that straight line it's just a straight line yeah, if it's a straight line, it's it's not one point because that's what you need for a circle. You need a radius. Well, as you're looking out, you can't say that those images to the right and the left are, um, what, the same distance as the one right in front of you because it's a straight line. I mean, how do you judge a distance in order to make the radius because that's the only way a circle can be described is by the radius. Well, if you're after trying to make a circle out of the horizon, then you have to put a radius distance to it. And as we all know, you cannot measure a distance to the horizon. So you, you're unable to form a circle even geometrically. It's all happening in your mind in beautiful imaginometry exactly wow we only have one horizon and the horizon in the begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking earth curve calculator is geometric it's called earth curve so it needs a postcode it hasn't got one it's nonsense the horizon's not earth curve but that's what it must be for their switcheroo from optics to geometry and that's all the bait and switch ever was taking what you see and claiming it as physical earth curve in geometry. That's what the bait and switch is. That's what the earth curve maths are. And if you take horizontal, the mathematical definition of it, everybody trusts maths, is uh, parallel to the plane of the horizon. Well, it's got parallel. You can only have parallel straight lines. There's no, there's no other definition of anything else and it's parallel to the plane of the horizon. Well, if horizontal's a provable straight line and that's parallel to a plane of the horizon, then the horizon's a straight line, mathematically, geometrically. That's and the exactly right. Well, correct, that's and the exactly principles. Right. Go, go on 10th, is that 10th? Okay. Yeah, the, S, the S1, S2, S3 star figures that do the three circle of equal altitudes, those are all path parallel. And it's the radii is parallel. So those are thousands and thousands of miles. Using the stars for guidance to know where you are is different because that's an above to the below. But they've made a grid of the stars and the angular distance is what they're using. And that's the zenith distance. Once you got one circle of equal altitude, that's flat. And the radii from that to you 
you're somewhere on that circle. You do a second circle of equal altitude using another luminary, it crosses the two points on that circle, but that radii might be 3,000 miles all flat. You got possibility of one or two positions you're on, but you use the stars above to do it because on Earth, your visual can only go so far. You don't know, you got to use something above as a guidance system and it's all flat all the time. This is the beauty of this, well done. Yeah, there's a square well, box, the, see, the I, 90s I, I... represent that parallel. So the square and compass, the arc measurement in the sky versus the 90 degree on the ground. Well, 10th is currently, or we're starting to hint it to the audience, talking about how you're actually inverting that based on the sky. So you're 90, that's basically in the sky. I, would, but it, I, would like I, got, I, I do have a problem with the idea that you're making it the when you're trying to explain the horizon geometrically, you drew the straight line, right? And then line out from that. But that would imply that you could see further by changing your degree just by turning a little bit in one direction or another. I, no. Yeah, no. if you're drawing a, a straight line at the end of that T, yeah, if you turn five degrees, you should, if that holds true, you should be able to see further. Angles, well, okay, uh, you're, you're kind of, what, can I try and wrap up what you're asking? It seems like you're asking why. What would be perceived as um, an arc in terms of the limitation of the lens of your eye? You'd, you'd be presented with an arc in terms of the distance limitation, uh, the diffraction limit, which would be what we're describing in this instance as the horizon. Now, if it's a straight flat line in geometric terms, then optically you're seeing further out to the edges. Is that what you're asking about? Well, when you just describe it geometrically as a straight line and you draw on a straight line from you to the horizon and then another line straight out from that if you moved five degrees and done the same thing the edges the outside boundaries of your vision would extend further if that were true correct i agree and it, but it's so, not. so because i don't know the answer i will lean on bev and say why would the optical limitation we have in the form of a horizon represent itself so beautifully straight and flat geometrically do you know the answer you don't have to if you don't know i don't know no i just say that geometry is um literally broke down it's earth measure right well you're not measuring anything here you're just conceptually can thinking about a circle now i'd say that may be a resemble you know a, a, a an afterthought of a, of a model that may be wandering around in your brain because there's a lot of people that want to make straight lines into circles. I mean, it's, there's a no, no, you missed what I said. Like I said, there was a danger in confusing optics with geometry. Now, that, that was my point. Well, you, it, if a horizontal has been described through the ages as being parallel to the plane of the horizon, that's where, horizontal comes from right the very term horizontal to me comes from the true horizon is over water and a horizontal is a natural state i mean everybody knows what it is it's a state of balance that's achieved by water I and mean, water shows us the horizontal so the horizontal is it comes from reality uh, you, now I, I i appreciate that too bev but I think the question's kind of being asked in terms of the optics. Why wouldn't it be the case that the lens of your eye doesn't give you a curved representation in terms of the limitation at your periphery? Why does it present so perfectly flat when, in my mind, the optics would suggest that what we should see should curve? Is that our brains correcting something that a lens would naturally do? Because, in my mind, it should not present itself as flat that would be the horizon in terms of its geometric usefulness when you draw a line out to it because we know of a plane being beneath our feet you can apply that and have it function but but merely in terms of the optics to me what john's suggesting is our eyes shouldn't give us a perfectly geometric flat line at the edge of our vision it should 
curve around so that the distances that we have presented to the lens of our eye match the limitations of the eye itself. That would mean that you'd actually see and perceive a curved horizon. But we don't. Can I just ask just a question here? How many other things that we know are straight are curved by the lens of our eye, even at the per peripheral of our vision? Almost nothing that I can think of. Why would it apply to the horizon? I, I don't know. I'm asking John on his behalf, so if this is a stupid question, don't tell me off. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, no, I didn't mean to sound like I was telling you off, Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm the same. Uh, I, I, it is described as horizontal and it is measured as horizontal and it's used as a straight line. I, I, why somebody's perception of them wanting it to be a, a circle or somehow, I don't know. Like, doesn't make any sense to me. Is that the way our eyes work? Well, yeah, this is what we're figuring out. Right? Yeah, we're Go on, 10th. Okay, let me interject. So just from the reading of navigation, the sextant, using the natural horizon rather than a bubble sextant or an artificial horizon. Okay. The differences are if you use the natural horizon, you're in the ocean, you're looking out, and you see a horizontal as far as the eye could show you. You use that when you bring the double reflective uh, workings of the sextant, the sun to the top of that horizontal where the sky seems to meet the sea. You wiggle it around, you rock it until you can get a vertical because what they want you to do is make sure you get that vertical when you say mark and take the minutes, seconds, hours, and degrees because they need a perpendicular. They need that 90. That sun's zenith distance is a 90 degree relationship. It's somewhere over the earth straight up and there's your plum and it's hidden. Now you can't see 3000 miles because your eyes won't let you, but the sextant is saying, guess what? It's 3000 miles of straight and I need a 90. This tool will give me a 90. So they, they are telling us to measure and navigate the earth. You work with 90. What's a 90? What's the perpendicular relationship there? That's what it is. Forget what the eyes tell you one day and the other, what has to happen is more important than what the eyes are telling you. Well, yeah, I'd rather apologize for bringing this up because, you know, there's still 95% of the world that thinks it's a sphere. And me interjecting things like this ain't exactly helping. No, no, no so, not at all. No, no, would, gonna, no, no, not at all. You represent me. somebody who's considered this. Not at all. Don't apologize. Not one second. No, no, no. I won't stand for that. No, no, no apology needed. Not at all. Anyway, I'm going to round out on that note. So with that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Streams. Hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the PayPal link, joining as a member and all that good stuff. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. And this is a particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.